Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. We're going to be talking about an annual dinner that is coming up next week, but you need to make reservations now. Joining us in the studio is Judy Brown. She is the Executive Director of the Dubois County Soil and Water Conservation District. Near the DC SWDC CD or whatever, however it comes out to be. Uh, basically, what is the Soil and Water Conservation District? The Soil and Water Conservation District is an entity of Indiana state government. Each county in Indiana has one, uh, but we are set up legislatively. And then we're very fortunate in that the counties support the Soil and Water Conservation Districts. So all of the staff are actually county employees. So we are actually a partnership between the state and the county. Okay. And what's your purpose? If that, I, you know, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but kind no. of what... What do you do? The purpose of soil and water conservation districts are to uh, assess the local resource needs, primarily soil and water needs, and then determine which needs to focus on. So we have a, a board of supervisors. There are five local residents that are our supervisors, and they are the ones who kind of say, okay, we're going to focus on soil and water quality in the Potoka River or cover crops or they pick what resources, forestry, invasive species, whatever they feel like are the important resources and then our activities and the things that we work on focus on these things. So currently our areas of focus are soil erosion, water quality, forestry, invasive species and in the past we've had livestock also as an issue and so we'll seek grants and offer cost share to local residents to address these specific resources. So, for example, if we want to get more cover crops on the ground, we seek a grant, offer that to landowners as um, cost share, and then they plant the cover crops, and then the, having the cover crops on the ground helps to stop erosion, plus it helps to build up their soil. So it's a win-win, and we're addressing our needs. Uh, we also help uh, people in the urban areas. We address concerns that they have as well. They can contact us if they have issues and then we could come out and take a look at that, so take a look at their problem to address their erosion concerns or their water concerns. In addition to that, we also... Um, you really do a lot. You're also yeah. working in collaboration with others. Yes. I, I know yeah, with that's the city correct. of Jasper, you yes. you know the rain barrel thing and that the, the home show that Jasper Chamber does, uh, you are there and somebody from Jasper is there and you're talking about, I guess, runoff in a right. way. From your yards, yeah, we, um, we, also, we sell rain barrels at cost, so if anyone would like a rain barrel, they could contact us. It helps control the runoff and the erosion off yards. But where I was going before is that we also work with the USDA. That's another agency that we partner with and we work with them, so if there are uh, cost share dollars offered through the USDA, um, we also work in partnership with the Natural Resources Conservation Services to get those funds out on the ground as well. So we partner with several agencies, but our role is to determine the local needs and help to address them. So if, if I'm at home and I have 40 acres and I keep losing a lot of ground in the bottom 40 because it's going in the river, do I call you up and say, what can I do? Yes. Is that? Oh, yes. and you'll come out and look and say, well, this, here's some suggestions not based me, on what you know. Right. Not me personally, but we have a um, district conservationist through the Natural Resources Conservation Service. And so he will go out to farm ground and basically look at it and say, you know, we can plant um, a filter strip or we can put a waterway or something to to control the way the water flows off the ground to stop the erosion and I that in turn fixes the water quality. I know you've come in and you brought to a show one time a radish. Yes. It's called a radish, okay, but it was, it was huge. It's a tillage radish. Yes, yes. and uh, it, it, am I losing my mind or am I starting to see that more in fields than I used to? It just seems like I was driving the other day and I thought, that looks like the stuff that Judy brought in yes, that time. Yes, they are getting more common. Indiana actually leads the nation in using the cover crops and people in Dubois County have been very proactive and they are adopting these things in their, on their crop fields and the people also can use them in their gardens as well. And what is really neat about the tillage radishes is that they do get rather large and so they are making holes in the soil but they also have long, long tap roots. So this taproot is making a channel deep into the soil, and so when you plant your corn or your, your crop, the roots of the corn could follow that deep channel down into the soil and access the water. So in times of drought, 
um, the, the roots are down deep enough to access the water that's lo lower in the water table. Mm -hmm. And also, um, during the winter time, the, uh, the radish is collecting the nitrogen, the excess nitrogen, the excess nutrients that are in the soil. So then when they uh, decompose in the spring, those nutrients are again released into the soil and that helps the crops as well because then those nutrients are right there and ready to, uh, ready to be used rather than running off in the rain. Is one of the goals to not till? To yes. Okay, I mean, I hear a lot about no-till. Is that one of the goals is to get people not to till and by doing this you don't necessarily need to till? Or when you use the radishes, yes, that helps to uh, keep the soil loose. The goal is not to till because when you till the soil, you break up the, the soil structure, you break up the, uh, um, you know, the root channels, mm -hmm. and you also introduce oxygen to the soil so that the, the microbes in the soil burn up your organic matter faster. They, you know, it activates them so your organic matter gets used up quicker. So we encourage people to use no-till or minimum till to leave their soil structure intact, to leave their biology in the soil intact so that it encourages more healthy soil and more diverse biology so it helps the crops to grow. Okay. Now, you've heard a lot that may confuse you, uh, and you may be wondering, well, that really doesn't affect me. I don't have a farm, but it really does. Right. Uh, and you work for everybody in the county, That's regardless of where you live, uh, and you're going to have the annual dinner, and it's an opportunity for people to come out and find out more. Right. Every year we have an annual dinner. That's why it's annual, I guess, yeah. but <laughs> it's, it's re actually required by law that we okay. have this annual meeting. and. What we are required to do at this annual meeting is to report our activities for the past year. So our, our finances will be reported, all of our activity for the past year will be reported, our accomplishments. And one of the things that we're really proud of is that last year we were recognized as one of the showcase districts in Indiana. So we received an award uh, acknowledging that we're one of the showcase districts. So you know, that'll be celebrated in our end of report and annual meeting as well. But one of the things that we like to do at our annual meeting is have a speaker that we feel is of interest to the, to the people in the county. And this year, I'm very excited about having Fred Whitford as our speaker. Fred is with the pesticide program at Purdue University, but he's also an author. And he writes some very interesting books about Purdue Extension. And I heard him do his presentation last year, and I was really excited about bringing that to our annual meeting. Because when our extension agents, uh, every year they're required to submit a report to Purdue University. And I really don't remember how long extension has been around in Indiana, but it may be close to 100 years. So there are 100 years worth of reports of activities from Du Bois County on file at Purdue. And what Fred Whitford has done is go back through all of those records. And so he, his presentation is going to be revolving around programs for the last however long extension has been active in Dubois County, but these reports include photographs. So he will be bringing old photographs from field days, from events that people had on their farms, and that's a part of his presentation. So, you know, if you're sitting there, you might say, oh my gosh, that's my neighbor's farm, or that's my granddad's farm. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be a more of an interactive presentation because there are photos that he doesn't know who the people are in the photos because they're, you know, old historical photos. So, you know, it'll be interactive because the people in the audience then can react to the photos and say, oh my gosh, I know that's my uncle's farm and that's my grandparents. And so I'm really excited. Yeah, I like history. Yeah. And, right. And so this, you know, the conservation district is for and of the people of Dubois County. And this presentation is very much going to be about the people of Dubois County and our history. So I think, you know, I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to his presentation. Okay. And, and is it, it's Thursday? It's Thursday, February 4th, okay. and we'll, it's at the Huntingburg Event Center, and it will begin at uh, 6.30. And it does involve a meal, so if you're interested in the meal, um, we are selling tickets. They're seven fifty each. $7.50. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. That's, that is a great price. Right, right, it is. We have some sponsors that help defray some of the expense of the meal. It will be catered by catering by Meyer, so we know it's going to be an excellent yeah. meal. They're at the event center in Huntingburg. If you want to come in just for the presentation, you can do that. You don't have to purchase a meal ticket. So if you want to come in for our business meeting and for the presentation, you're more than welcome to come and sit in for that. 
course, we'd like to have you for the whole evening. So, you know, we're very uh, anxious to sell tickets to uh, get people to come in and participate and enjoy this great presentation. If somebody wants tickets, what do they do and the, when's the deadline? Okay, they can call the office. Our number is 812-482-1171, extension 3. Again, that's 812-482-1171, extension 3. They can call us at the office. They can stop by our office. We're on Executive Boulevard um, by Vincennes University, just south of uh, Vincennes. That's where we're located. They can stop in the office and buy tickets. We really would like to have the reservations and the tickets sold by Friday because that allows us to get the count to the caterer. But we may have a little bit of leeway. So if you think about it over the weekend, please call by Monday so we can get our final, final count in to the caterer. But um, I think it's going to be a, a great meeting. We're looking forward to uh, showcasing what we've done. We're looking forward to um, having Fred Whitford come in and share about the history of extension and, and the good work that the farmers have done in the county over the last hundred years or so. Yeah, it's, it really does sound like a great evening. And you know, a lot of times an event like this, the tickets are usually twenty, thirty dollars, but not not this case. You know, and it's a it's a fantastic meal, but the history part of hearing him talk is going to be very interesting. Yes. And I guess afterwards you can go and say, you know, in that picture, that was my grandfather. So, right. And he wants that because then he'll know and can tag those right. pictures. And th what I also found very interesting is that in one one picture. Um, somebody in the audience, I heard this presentation last year at the Extension Annual Meeting, but somebody in the audience noted that the children were wearing clothes that were made out of feed sacks. And I guess the feed companies knew that the women during the Depression would use the feed sacks, so they had flower or printed patterns on the feed sacks. And so they were talking about how families use the feed sacks to make the clothing. And I just, I just found all of that so interesting. And we'll find out more. Right, right. Okay. But they need to call you now to get yes. your reservation in. Yes. Um, you can take however many tickets you'd like, Seven fifty a ticket. Call by Friday, but if you really don't, if you put it off till Monday, that would be okay. Yes. But probably yes. best if you don't. And Thursday night at the Honeyberg Event Center. And again, it starts February at 7th. No, it starts at 6.30. 6.30, okay. February 4th at the Honeyberg Event Center. What a great evening. It's the Dubois County Soil and Water Conservation District annual meeting or dinner. Uh, and it's something that everybody's invited to. You're part of the SWCD. Yes. You might as well take advantage of it. Thank you very much, Judy, for coming in. Well, thanks for having me. Glad Appreciate to have it. you. Judy Brown has been our guest from the Dubois County Soil and Water Conservation District. The annual meeting is next Thursday. Get your reservation in now. Thank you for watching WJTS Inform. We're local people watching local people.